Hi everyone, today I want to show you a giant fish tank done right. This huge aquarium of 75,000 liters or 20,000 gallons sits in the Aquatoto Freshwater Aquarium in Gifu, Japan. Like everyone, I love big fish, but to do this kind of thing right, you need aquariums of this size. What is special here, and actually kind of rare, is that the fish are not obese like in many aquariums. I think these mixed giant fish aquariums are really difficult, especially if they are predators. Coupled with the gel diet that most public aquariums feed their fish, these giant fish exhibits often look kind of sad with all these fat fish. Here they got it right. These fish are all from the Mekong River in Southeast Asia. It features some of the most endangered giant fish on the planet, and I've never seen them in a community tank looking absolutely perfect like this. The most impressive is a group of five giant Mekong catfish, or plabuk. Pangasionodon gigos. These are adult, man-sized fish already, and you can see why this is no aquarium fish. They are absolutely gigantic. Hard to imagine that these monsters are just about two-thirds of their adult size now. Thanks to Kawaii-san for helping me with the extra information and a great visit. The curator and staff of the aquarium actually published a paper about the growth rate of these giant catfish. A link will be in the description. This aquarium is 12 meters or 36 feet long, half as wide. The catfish have been here since 2004 and arrived at a size of roughly 110 centimeters or just under four feet, and then six years of age. The paper outlines nicely how they measure the food and ensure a proper diet for these huge algae eaters. The annual food intake for each fish is around 20 kilograms or 44 pounds. They found out that each catfish had times where they were fasting for up to 20 days, often coinciding with their flood season in nature. I think this is the case for many of the large fish, where they simply do not feed during certain times of the year. Their heads are really odd. As babies, their faces do not have these extreme features yet, but in these large animals you can see that they do not only have this feature that almost looks like a nose, but also a huge smiling mouth. As adults, the giant catfish doesn't have any teeth or barbels, and they feed mostly on filamentous algae in nature. These giant fish also grow fast, so they require big filtration systems and massive amounts of food. This aquarium also features several adult iridescent sharks, Pangasia noron hippophthalmus, that sadly get sold as aquarium fish. Obviously, this is not well suited for any aquarium, but they look absolutely tiny compared to the plabuk. The second giant fish here is Catlacarpio siamensis, the Mekong giant barb. These monsters are the size of sheep, and while they do get bigger, I've never seen them this size in an aquarium. It will be interesting to see when they get even bigger. This is actually the largest barb in the world, supposedly reaching 3 meters or 10 feet and 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. Back in the 1990s, I had imported some of these, and it was astonishing to see how quickly they were growing in the aquarium. They went from fingerling size to almost one foot long in a few months. Too bad that this kind of fish is pretty much impossible to keep long term unless they are in a public aquarium. The third species that is actually on the endangered species list is Probarbus juliani, the Isoc barb. And in this aquarium, there are around 15 of them. It is a very attractive giant barb with bright red eyes and horizontal black lines. All three of these giant fish are in danger because of the dams in the upper Mekong and the overfishing with the very efficient gill nets. This barb is also no aquarium fish, and the record size is around 150 centimeters or 5 feet with 70 kilograms or 185 pounds. Today, all these giant fish are very rare in the river, and I think it is increasingly difficult to catch them in the really big sizes. The government of Thailand and Cambodia actually have breeding programs for these fish to try and save all of them. To make this aquarium more interesting, there are big schools of smaller fish. None of these giant fish species is predatory, so the smaller fish actually work well in here. There are three schools of smaller fish. The slender blue fish are Thai Matsir, or Tor Tambroides. These are just about arm length adults, but in this aquarium they look tiny. There's a group of around 20 of them. At the surface, there's a group of Hypsia barbus vernae, 
a very high back barb that looks a lot like our common tinfoil barb that is occasionally sold as an aquarium fish, despite the fact that it also gets really big. You will also notice some really big fire eels, Mustacembolus erythrotania, swimming around the tank. It says a lot about the diet of these giant fish that they don't vacuum up the fire eels. There are of course plenty of predators in the Mekong, and they have separated this tank from the adjacent one with the divider. The neighboring tank has some big size Wallago Atu, the helicopter catfish. If this huge catfish got into the other side, it would be going after all the smaller fish. In with it are some monster sized giant guramis and Pangasio sanit wongzi, the Perun shark. This species gets almost as big as the giant Mekong catfish, but also has these very nice long fin extensions. I hope you enjoyed our look at the giant Mekong catfish. If you are in Japan and you're visiting Nagoya, it is actually not that far to Gifu. It is only one hour or so by train and definitely worth the visit. They have all the Japanese native fish that we showed in our other video linked here. And this Mekong exhibit is definitely worth seeing in person.